So Martin, thank you for taking that conversation, because indeed, I mean, this is, we could have had that conversation for the past probably 20 years. Now, media is permanently disrupted. Yeah. The internet, yeah. like social media, digital distribution, all of these topics, and now AI. The Pope in Balenciaga, I thought it was a nice uh, presentation by Ludwig before on the Holy Trinity with the Pope in the middle in Balenciaga at the core of media creation. So where's the industry at? What do you think about and what do you worry about right now? Well, um, first, thanks uh, to Steffi uh, for the kind introduction. She's just renamed our company. <laughs> Expect the unexpected, I guess, is uh, <laughs> what uh, this conference is all about. So AI, I think Ludwig uh, in, his, in his opening address this morning said it perfectly. AI changes everything and it changes everything for the media industry because he is absolutely right. AI means that the marginal cost of content generation is zero. Now, who of you guys works in the media industry? Let me see, okay, so I have a couple of colleagues sitting down there. <laughs> um, that's a scary thought, mm. right? Because the media industry thrives from creating, curating, and distributing content. Now, the distribution part has already been disrupted by, uh, by the rise of the internet, suddenly, content became digital and could be distributed for free. And that took away a couple of the moats that the people in the media industry had. So, mm -hmm. you know, it used to be in uh, shipping magazines and having TV licenses over the air, in having uh, regulatory uh, um, uh, help um, in really keeping the market in a structure that everybody could live with. Um, and then the internet really, really disrupted that. And uh, we, um, we always say sort of industries being disrupted um, the media industry had a very short fuse and a very big bang um, mm. because it really attacked everything that we were, that we were doing. Um, AI will continue to do that. It's the next disruption and we need to be watchful. The thing is, I'm fairly optimistic. Back in 1995 when Steffi said she went off to the internet to have a look, um, uh, we really got, we got the hell disrupted yes. out of us. We're now three times the size that we were back in 1995, so I'm hopeful Mm. We're going to get it done. Very well. So how do you think about uh, the core of your business? We just touched upon it so a little bit. So that continuum, right? So the, the, um, the creation element of it, creativity. How do you, if that's the core value proposition of media, right? What do you sell? Like what the essence of the business is. How do you think about that in the context of AI? What's the, the future of the business in that context? And how much do we go from creation ultimately curation and what role does the consumer play? I think numbers? that's an excellent question, uh, especially since you mentioned one word that has not really been mentioned on stage today, and that's the word consumer. Um, we actually do consumer media, and a consumer media company is successful if you produce products and services that consumers like. And pay for. And just like, actually, at some point, because you you're the CEO, right, and we're going to get to that in we'll a minute, get but you run to that company, eventually, so probably to the question yes. of monetization. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> totally unexpectedly. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean. Um, so, but let's start with the product because if we have a great product and we have the eyeballs and we have the engagement and we have the trust of consumers, there'll be a business. I'm not worried about that. Mm -hmm. What I'm worried about is: Will we get the eyeballs? Will we keep the trust? And will we be able to create trust for new products in an age of AI? Um, and I think what's important to see is that the media industry doesn't actually exist. What is media? It used to be print, so it was newspapers, it was magazines, um, it was broadcasting, so there was television, there was radio, and then the internet came out. And then next to that you have the movie industry, uh, you have the music industry, so anything that's about content production and content curation is the media industry. Now, if the creation piece in terms of cost goes to zero, that means everybody will be affected. And I think that is absolutely true for the media industry. So we need to ask ourselves, what's actually our role in the future? What do we do as a media industry in an age where the computer can create anything? I was on the movie side talking to Doris Story yesterday, um, the, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the director, um, and she said for the last three months they've now had a technology in filmmaking where you could do a movie with Brad Pitt and actually have Brad Pitt in Brad Pitt's voice 
talk in German, French, Ukrainian, mm. and in Zulu. It is not a problem. The computer can do it. Um, do people want that? Well, the question is unclear. Mm. Um, it is really, really unclear what consumers want. And I think that is something that where we now need to do a lot of work, we need to find out what consumers actually, how they think about AI, how they think about computer generated content. It's early days and we need to be extremely watchful. And what's your hunch? So how do you tell it apart? What's, let's say, um, just a volume efficient, more generation entertainment I consume and pass through versus what's something I actually want a human to be at the other side? And and how do you tell apart which one's going to be which? And then how do you align behind that's, it? That's two questions right there. Let, mm -hmm. let, let me start with the first one. Let's, let's look at the different types of media. Mm -hmm. Now, all of you guys are consumers. I mean, you're experts in AI and everything, but you're also consumers. Um, how many of you are parents? Show of hands. All right, okay. Mm -hmm. So you know kids' magazines, coloring books. That's media. That's media for the youngest. Now, how many of you think that a coloring picture with the threes for the blue and the fours for the green say that that needs to be human created or could actually a computer generate a coloring book who if you think it needs to be human okay so consumer acceptance for computer generated content apparently in that segment is really high if i take you as a proxy um, the second thing, let's talk about, um, we're the world's largest producer of food magazines. Um, let's, um, and yes, there's a little story for the nice. insiders of you. Um, and you're probably going to get to it, knowing you. Um, so the second question is, okay, so food, health, nutrition. Um, content, where you actually cook up things that you will eat and feed yourself with. How many of you think that that is something that should be done by a computer? Okay, so that's uh, a third. Um, okay, third example. News commentary. Robert Habeck is now in charge of Germany's energy policy. Um, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> let's assume he passes a new law for the German energy security. And we have an article in a news magazine. How many of you would like that to be computer generated? And how many of you would like that to be by an expert journalist who knows about energy policy created by a human being? Exactly, virtually everyone. Um, there was actually one hand up, and they, we need to talk outside. <laughs> so when we say, what does the computer do to media and what does the consumer think about it? Yeah. Um, it really depends on which type of media you, you, you're talking about. And I think mm -hmm. we as a media industry need to be extremely watchful to say, what does the consumer want and what does the consumer accept? Now, the second part of your question, um, um, sort of, you know, what's the, what's the role of a media company? Now, mm. um, for those of you, the few of you who hadn't, hadn't heard the story, what we actually did in, back in January, um, we created a food magazine just done by the computer. And mm. we didn't label it and we put it out to, uh, to the kiosks and we sold it. And we got slaughtered for it in the press, and journalists hated us. I was being called the Antichrist of Journalism. Love that title. <laughs> um, so, and, and why did we do that? Because we wanted to test, A, what's possible, and second, we wanted to test consumer reaction. Mm. Um, now, what we tested was, um, so all of the pictures, all of the cooking photography, all of the food photography was done by Midjourney. Very well done. And all the recipes were basically done uh, by, by ChatGPT and then tested so we didn't sort of uh, uh, poison anyone. Um, so that was a good thing. <laughs> um, but then we put it out. We didn't label it. And then we did the market research. And this is, this is where I think it's, it's, it's really interesting. Um, the market research, we, we asked them three questions. The first question we asked them was, how did you find the magazine? And the reply was, it was OK. It wasn't very good. It wasn't lousy. What's it was the usual th reviews you get when you put out a new food magazine? Excellent, of course. Um, <laughs> it's a trade secret, dear. Um, so, so it was an average magazine. Okay. So the second thing is what we did in, in, in the consumer research. We asked people, now imagine this thing would be done by a computer and generative AI. How would you see it? And the result was, it was sort of split down the middle. About half said, 
oh, what a terrible idea, I would never buy that. The other half said, that's cool, um, you know, if the recipe is worse, that's fine. And some of them even said, oh, that's brilliant, because you actually get to discover new stuff that's out on the internet, and the machine reads it, and there are creative ideas, and there was a lot of positivity about it. But it was really split. And then we told people, look, this thing that you just ranked as an okay product was actually done by AI. And the reactions we got, again, was all over the place. It was between, oh, that's really smart of you, some. Um, others said, oh God, I'm shocked, large group. And others who said, oh, that's really smart of you, but I don't want to pay for it anymore ah. because you guys don't have any cost. Yes. So yes. if I look at the, and then what was the, what's our takeaway from it? The first takeaway from it is we really need to be engaged with the consumer to say, what is it that is okay to produce with mm. AI? The second question then becomes, what's the business model? Where's, where really is the money? And there we need to talk about curation. That's the word you mentioned, Solish. Yes. Um, I think that's really, really important because curation is about, in an age of infinite choice, curation really is key. And that would be one of the key elements of any media outlet going forward and of any media company going forward it will veer away from creation. There will still be tons of creation because yes. there's tons of things that the machine can't do. And we yeah. need to pinpoint that and let's talk about that maybe. Um, I yes. don't know how much time we have, but um, uh, uh, that is something we should talk about. But what is becoming more and more important is the curation piece because there is a tsunami of bullshit about to hit us. Yes. Content creation will explode and a lot of it is gonna be bad, a lot of it is gonna be fake, a lot of it is gonna be vengeful and toxic, and we need to make sure as a media company that we help consumers to decide between that yes. and the stuff that's actually good and consumable. Very much so, I couldn't agree more. I think this curation element, Martin, I think also builds on trust. And I think then when you have a brand that actually exists and is a household name and stands for high quality, I think the trust element in interacting with the consumer so that they allow you for curation. I mean, what DLD is, is a curated community of excellent content. That's why we all come. Because this is like we come, it's worthwhile spending the day, two days, like five days, Steffi, new formats. <laughs> so I think there's something on curation and your ability to curate high quality, both innovative, but then also like substantial deeper content. I think that's a, that's a real thing. And also what you said when you described the examples, what sparked a thought of me is maybe the a renaissance almost of quality journalism and maybe finally a willingness to pay because if everything else is so abundant and like the only stuff the humans do really well, so the, the example you just put out on the new energy law, I think the willingness to pay suddenly for that end might actually reset like some of that, but just a thought. Let's pick two of the concepts um, that, that you mentioned. One is trust, and the other one, one's um, willingness to pay. There's another name for trust, and that's brand. Mm. Now, if you see a chocolate bar that reads um, some weird cooked up thing done in the backyard under shady health standards, go eat it, you're not gonna buy it. If you read Lindt, you go, ah, good. Mm. So it's, 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 mm. it's in the brand, right? Uh, it is, and that is, what is a brand? A brand is nothing else but a promise of trust. Mm. And media companies have really powerful brands. So in particular, you know, the incumbents, which is interesting, huh? because I think that yeah. resets also that table. Lid. And that is absolutely right. That's exactly mm. the way we look at it. We think we have a big upside through AI because what we see in this tsunami of weird content being done out there our brands are actually becoming more valuable. Mm -hmm. They are becoming more helpful to consumers because at the end of the day, you will need, as a, from a from consumer perspective, you know, let's go back to the, um, let's go back to the, to the kids' magazine. Um, what you really do is you trust your kids on, you know, we do lots of educational supplements, mm -hmm. you know, sort of for the, for the, for on, on, on the preschool side. What is it that you feed your kids? Mm -hmm. You really want to, make sure that you spend your money on a product that you can trust to have the benefit of your child in view. Mm -hmm. So if it's just any old rag, you probably wouldn't be willing to pay for it. And you know, especially on the news side, suddenly our news brands become much more important because people say, ah, if it's under Focus Online, if it's under chip.de, 
it's probably good and credible content mm -hmm. and it doesn't send me anywhere. You need different capabilities and probably as well when you think about your organization, when we look internally for just one more minute before a final bonus question. There's like when you think about like in-house, like capabilities, how do you, how do you think about that? Um, look, I, I think um, that's, that's a big challenge and I think uh, the guys on the panel before alluded to that. Um, so, you know, as a CEO, um, you know, there's lots of smart people in this room, there's lots of smart people at Verda, but it's 11,000 employees. And at the end of the day, every single job is going to be affected by mm. AI. Mm. And whenever you have a new technology, people are going to be watchful, people are going to be on their back feet, and people are going to be really hesitant to embrace it. So the only way to get the organization mm. going, and I believe that the media of the future will use AI as great technology paired with human creativity to actually create good new stuff that consumers really mm -hmm. want. The only way to get that is you've trained thousands of people on it. And just as an example, over the last four months, we've now trained over 5,000 people in the Boda universe. Mm -hmm. We have a, you know, regular um, AI meetings in the company, and we really bring AI to the entirety of the organization. And that's a big challenge. I have a fantastic team uh, in product and innovation um, uh, that, um, that, that manages that process. And by now, we've switched from 90% hesitant and 10%, yes, let's go for it, to about half-half. So we're not there yet, but it is something that we're working on. For example, one of the things that anybody who runs a company, I can highly recommend, you do, what, we, what we're doing is an AI day to create new products and we actually challenge every single business unit to come up with great ideas and then we give them um, support in terms of consulting services from the IT guys to m help them actually create the new stuff and then suddenly you have people who'd never thought about you know, doing programming um, actually you know, with a little helping side on their hand, um, they can they can actually build new stuff and you get this positive momentum and that's exactly where we're trying to go. Wonderful. Thank you for all of this. Last question. Um, will AI, when we have this chat in 10 more years, will there be a real CEO on that stage running a real business or <laughs> is AI eventually also going to do that? What do you think? Look, um, <laughs> AI is getting better by the minute. Um, and... Uh, AI is getting really, really smart. Um, and I think AI is going to get so smart, it will never want my job. <laughs> Bravo. Well done.